welcome back and I'm going to now start talking moving on with the um, continuing on with the paint bucket exercise I'm going to start talk uh, start um, uh, talking about the uh, stored gradients now there's a way in flash to uh, use a, a gradient on um, on a whole bunch of objects and you'll see in in Toon Boom, if I just paint uh, you know a lot of these dots one after the other every gra the gradient on each is um, is centered but what I prefer in some cases especially when painting big backgrounds with lots of little elements like blades of grass or leaves on trees I'd like um, m m a whole group of them to have um, a gradient common to them so what I the way to do that in um, Toon Boom is to use a stored colored gradient so what I'll do is uh, create one ball and I'll just use the gradient uh, thing to maybe I'll just make it uh, spread out so this gradients spread out and now f what I do is with the select tool I select the object or select the area of color that it, that has the gradient in it and there's a little little button down the bottom of the select tool properties and it's called store color gradient so I'll click that and now everything that I draw with the paint bucket if I oh sorry with the uh, paintbrush or the paint bucket um, with the paintbrush I gotta make sure I press this button which is called the use the stored colored gradient so I'll click that and now everything I paint will have that gradient in there and that's very handy for doing various things you can do that with linear gradients or whatever the only problem here as far as I know um, from my testing earlier yeah is if I move this around now it uh, it only moves it around on one object I guess that can be helpful um, can be um, uh, can be useful in certain effects um, but in this case you I'd prefer to be able to move this gradient and it uh, updates on all the objects but anyway that's just a small thing um, all right so let's uh, let's move along that's just a brief thing on storing the gradients um, we've covered uh, all the paint bucket now so let's move on to the next one which is just line rectangle ellipse these are just shapes that um, uh, the same as the pencil they are they just draw with um, a minimum number of vertices so uh, if I choose the contour editor and click that line that I've just drawn you see it's only got uh, two vertices and in order to to curve this I can just push the curve with the contour editor um, I wish it didn't actually deselect it once I had curved it but anyway once the line has some curve information built in um, you can play with the tangent handles and you can make an S shape or whatever you like um, and yes it's uh, that's nice to have that now the way I usually do backgrounds if um, if I'm doing something that I want to be architecturally sound um, I'll uh, I'll construct it with um, let me pick a color that you can see I'll construct it with uh, a perspective grid and and uh, lots of um, these kind of construction lines um, to uh, to build the framework for a scene uh, holding down shift as you may or may not know gives you perfectly uh, straight horizontal and vertical lines um, oh, it looks like you can do it in increments what is it that's about 30 degree increments or 15 degree increments there we go no 30 15 anyway let's move move along um, so yeah that's how I I paint um, how I construct backgrounds because this allows me to paint areas of color it might also interest you to know that with the, the line tool uh, holding down alt will snap to other lines and that's very very handy when you're constructing backgrounds and and elements in this way so hold down alt and it snaps and uh, yeah it takes a lot of the um, the free handy type of guesswork and if you're into this type of uh, constructing this type of stuff in this way then um, yeah you're probably not going to be too keen on guesswork anyway now once I've got like a basic framework for a room or something 
I'll just go around with the uh, eraser and erase the lines that I don't want. Say, for example, those. And I've got a bit of a box for a room. And then I just, um, with, the, with the Paint Unpainted tool, which is uh, Alt-Y, um, I can just go around and paint walls and floor and so forth. So that's usually how I create backgrounds. One nice thing that, um, that I love to do with line work is uh, once I've drawn the line work, and I like to drop the alpha of that line color, and that gives me a nice soft kind of edge to it. You can see that all through my work uh, that I've done that. Um, it's a favorite technique of mine. So that's fairly straightforward. The line tools and the um, the rectangle is the same. So it's uh, you've got some options here. That one of them, one in particular, is to auto fill. So m normally when you draw a, a rectangle, which is one of the first steps I do when I'm, I'm starting a new scene in Animate Pro or Animate is um, just draw a rectangle and then fill it with color for my background or color card. Um, I'll uh, you know either do a sky or just do a base color for the scene so that I can see stuff um, in front of it. Uh, but there is an autofill option in the rectangle. So choose the rectangle from or the ellipse, whatever you want to use from the tools panel and then you uh, choose the auto fill button click that and now when you draw it it'll automatically fill it with the color that you've got chosen um, so yes the polyline is the same you have um, I don't think you have auto fill options on the polyline uh, don't 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 polyline is just um, you draw by plotting points and if you're a, if you use the mouse to draw you will probably want to use these line tools because uh, they have a lot more control. Um, that they, they they're ideal for drawing stuff with a mouse because they're plotting points rather than actual freehand lines. I recommend that in Flash too. If you're a Flash user and you only have a mouse to draw, then uh, I highly recommend just using all the line tools because they they're very forgiving and very precise. Goodbye.